Good morning, everyone. God bless you all. It's a wonderful Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. This month is almost over. We thank God for how he has blessed us thus far in this month. We've had some challenges. We've had some testing. And we've had some actual physical transitions that have taken place, some that were close to us, uh, that have hurt. Uh, our hearts and we're praying for those families that are going through that time of bereavement. I want to give with you, uh, give you today a, a word of encouragement. And this word of encouragement kind of centers around uh, discipline. And as disciples of Jesus Christ, we must exercise discipline. And I want to talk today about the discipline to uh, do what's right, the discipline to do what's right. You have to have discipline in your life to be able uh, to have the the spiritual push that you need to do the right thing. You know, a lot of times we want to put confidence in our flesh and believe that we can do it on our own, but without God, we can do nothing. So uh, we've been talking, my wife and I, and God bless you. Welcome back. Good to have you back here. I think she was with us on the first uh, Tuesday of this month uh, as we started out the new year. And here she is, coincidentally, the last Tuesday of the month to uh, to speak with us once again. So I thank God for First Lady Patricia. and I thank God for the discipline that she has. And I'm still striving to get to that place to have the discipline that she has to say no to some things. Uh, courageous faith we've gone through and some other people joined in with us 22 days of fasting uh, this month and today being the last day we fasted from midnight until 12 noon from the 3rd of January up until this day the 20 well until yesterday rather the 24th of uh, January so 22 days of fasting uh, just really kind of getting things back in line with God the way that they should be the Bible tells us, and I come from a, a family uh, that had many members. <laughs> we had uh, we had 14 children in my family, eight daughters uh, and six sons is what my parents had. And one of the things that my mother really instructed us and pushed us in was Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way that they should go, the way that they should go. And, you know, you just pray as a parent that they would have the discipline to take what training that they've been given and and obey and do the right thing. You know, the scripture goes on to say we train them up in the way that they should go. When they're old, they won't depart from it. So it's down on the inside. It's in them. And I just thank God today for uh, the time I spent in the military, the discipline uh, that I got to be able to do some of the smallest things. Do you have the discipline to obey? And that's so important. And I believe that's where my uh, wife is going to come from today. Uh, just having the discipline to, to be obedient and do what's right, uh, regardless of what your flesh feels or how you feel about certain things. Do you have the discipline to do the right thing? And that's what we want to really kind of push today. And uh, we'll give it into the hands of First Lady. Let her talk to us mm -hmm. um, from her heart today. Just give us what you have. Good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone. God bless you all. Yes, thank you, Pastor, for inviting me, having me back. So I thank God for that. But yes, do have the discipline. I know the last time I was on, I talked a little bit. I spoke about Satan in the Garden of Eden and how he used food as a weapon. And I'm going to give you these scriptures. These scriptures are because of time. Um, probably take too much time to read it, but the scriptures I want to give you, you can write them down. Genesis 1, 29 through 31. Genesis 1, 29 through 31. Then Genesis 2, 8 and 9. And then skip down to verse 16 and 17. Genesis 2, 8, 9. Skip down to 16 and 17. And you can just read those scriptures for yourself. And, you know, we're going to let us know how God has spoke to Adam and Eve, how he had planted a garden. And so this is from the beginning of time. He planted a garden for Adam and Eve so that they would have food to sustain them. 
And then as he told them that they could eat from every tree of the garden, uh, he goes on, and I think in Genesis 2, he goes on to talk about the, the, the trees, and they're pleasant, they're good, you know, um, good to look at, pleasant to taste, but he also gives them instruction on there is one tree that you should not eat from. Now, we also know that Satan was in the Garden of Eden, and he was there as a serpent. The Bible calls him a serpent. And he came in, he knows uh, what God has, the command that God has given, do not eat from a certain tree, the tree of good and not, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Do not eat from that tree. But also, as you read in there, you're going to find out that the tree of life was there too. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it seems that it was fine for them to eat from that tree. You know, and I cannot prove this part, but I believe in time, God was going to allow them to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, I don't have anything to back that up. That's just me talking. But I think God has a plan, his process, the way he is. Uh, and I believe that at some point in time, he would allow them maybe to eat from that tree. But at this point, God is telling Adam and Eve, do not eat from that tree. But yet and still, that is food. And that is in the garden. And it is a food. But we'll find out that that is a forbidden food. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> uh, Satan is in the garden. And he's led, he's enticing Eve to eat from this very fruit that he knows what will have the consequences of eating this food. And he's showing it to Eve and, you know, entices her. She eats from this fruit and then it's good. Undoubtedly it's good. She goes and she entices her husband. Eat from, eat this. And he, you know, succumbs to it and he eats the fruit. Okay. When he eats from this fruit, which is the fruit from the tree of good and knowledge, uh, from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. When, he, when they eat from this tree, immediately their eyes will open. And this is what Satan had told them, that your eyes will be open, you will be as a God. And so truly that happened, but he doesn't tell them everything. Because right. at this point, now their bodies will begin to deteriorate. Their bodies will die. And he didn't tell that. He didn't give them the whole truth. And so um, to this day, we can see that Satan is still enticing man with food, certain food that's just not good for your body. He, but he's using food as a weapon. In the garden, the food was a weapon against the body. The body would begin to deteriorate certain foods, certain foods. And so to this day, eating certain foods, it just helps the body to deteriorate, to mm -hmm. break down, break down. And to this day, he's still deceptive. And he shows you this food. He shows you the German chocolate cakes, the triple uh, decker um, sundaes, the deep fried chicken, which tastes, all of these things taste so very good. And it is a food. A lot of the processed foods, they taste good, but they you eat them. And what will happen is it will begin to cause oxidants, poisons in your body. And it causes your body to start breaking down. And then it causes... It causes diseases to come upon you, causes uh, inflammation. And so Satan is still being deceptive because to you, and so as we go back into the garden, because God had given man free will. Mm -hmm. So even now, you know, we have free will. And so her flesh, Eve's flesh got the best of her. Adam's flesh got the best of him. He wanted it. She wanted it. They did it. To this day, we have these foods that look so good to us. They look so good. We put them in our body. Um, and then after we've tasted it, oh, it was so good. I want more. I want more. And we keep going back to that food. We keep going back to those foods. But those foods are detrimental to our body. And it eventually, if you eat enough of it, it causes different diseases, sicknesses. It causes the body pain, like things like arthritis, different things that, that we're eating, the lung diseases, heart diseases of arthritis, all these things. And we found out a lot of it is the environment and a lot of it is how we're eating, how we're eating. And so in the garden, God had put the food, he had planted the garden that was good for Adam and Eve. And these foods will sustain the body. So then we find out what we need to do, because I told you when I was going through my situation with my daughter and God showed me the Garden of Eden, I said, go back to the Garden of Eden. And I went to the Bible to read. 
But what was in the Garden of Eden? Well, it's a lot of the produce food. And the thing is to eat them as close to the normal form as possible. The, and they will help to keep the body strong. It will help to build your immune system because God also gave us an immune system. So we have the immune system. So what we need to do now is help to keep this immune system strong. And how do we do that? By the foods that we're eating. We're eating processed foods and, and different things like this and too much sugars. And a lot of this is breaking down your immune system, is breaking down your defense system, which is what I call strong fighters. They're in there to fight against different things that will be coming into your body. But if we're not um, putting into our body things that are strong, that will help build the immune system, but we're steady taking in things that deteriorates your immune system, then as we're eating, the different diseases can call, they can come and they set up on you. You don't have anything to fight with. And I really believe that why you're, I know that in this world, you know, everybody has a time and death does come. But while you are here in this body, you're breathing, then you have the chance to keep your immune system strong. Right. What you're eating, the produce food, okay, so that they don't, they, the, um, they will help fight the, the, the different diseases, help promote a healthy immune system. Um, so that's basically what I really want to really keep talking about is how, you know, how we're eating, how we're eating and what we're putting into our bodies to, to help ourselves to be as strong as possible. And I said, in this day and time to be fit for the kingdom of God, you know, yes, one thing to be fit spiritually, that's true, but also fit, um, physically too, also that you're able, you know, to, you're, you're not just broken down. You're not just tired, too tired to, you know, you lay down at night and just too tired to even pray, get up in the morning, still feeling tired. You know, it's really a lot of times it's because of the things that we have eaten and we just cause our bodies to just um, be tired, be tired, not growing strength. When we lay down at night and we should be laying down between 10 and 2, the body is rebuilding itself regenerating itself between the hours of 10 and 2. But if we're not putting inside our bodies the things that's going to help uh, reconstruct, you know, recreate to build up, then we wake up the next morning and we're still feeling tired. The high blood pressures that sit upon us, you know, the different things. As Pastor said, we have to be disciplined. We really have to become disciplined and um, in the things that we're eating. And if you're having a hard time, then you're asking God, well, God help me. Because we don't want to keep giving Satan glory. And That's many right. times it's like, well, I know I'm going to die from something. You know, I'm going to die from something, which is true. But while you're here, keep your body healthy and strong. And don't let Satan have the glory because he's still there in a deceptive manner. Produce, showing to you all of these things that are so good. So he's still using food as a weapon against us, against our own bodies. We're killing our own bodies, you know, and seem to be okay with it. But ask God, God, help me to be obedient to your word. Help me to have discipline and not to be fallen prey to what Satan is giving us. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, First Lady, for those uh, wise uh, words of uh, instructions on how we can live. Uh, it's so important for us to have that discipline. And I thank God, you know, as I was looking at the word and those scriptures that she gave uh, and talking about discipline in Genesis 2 and 16, it says, the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. You know, God gave that commandment to, to Adam and he allowed himself to be uh, persuaded by Eve, she was persuaded by the serpent. And it's so easy for us to be persuaded by other people if we are not in the right place spiritually, if we don't have the discipline uh, to say no, the discipline to resist. You know, the Bible tells us to resist the devil and he will flee from us. So we have to have that discipline. And I just wanted to bring in that in the ancient Hebrew of Proverbs, discipline means to instruct what we're doing here today. Uh, it means to correct to chastise or to rebuke. You know, when we think about discipline, 
Sometimes we think about corporal punishment. We think about, you know, the discipline that we got uh, as children from our parents. But, you know, discipline is a lifestyle. And if you're going to be a, an effective disciple of Jesus Christ, you must have discipline. Mm -hmm. You must have discipline. So, you know, fasting is uh, something that requires discipline. Uh, praying is something that requires discipline and really studying and reading the word of God. You know, those are three weapons that we have to fight against Satan, to, to build up the discipline in our life. And we must do that. So I thank God for these words of, of wisdom from First Lady on today. Thank you for sharing with us. And I hope you uh, take to heart what's being shared, you know, and I used this scripture before, but uh, in Hosea 4 and 6, it says, my people perish uh, because of a lack of knowledge, you know, because of a lack of being able to receive, you know, we find ourselves in a state because we're not receiving what's being uh, passed on to us. So let's be disciplined. Yes. And I also know, you know, as children of God, we have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. And, um, you know, just see if the Holy Spirit, what what is it leading you into, even in your eating? And are you overriding the Holy Spirit? Because it leads us into righteousness. It leads us into righteous eating as well. Everything. It's not just um, how we live in our actions, but even in our food, in our eating, in everything, the Holy Spirit leads us. It's not everything except but the Holy Spirit leads us, it guides us, it directs us. Listen to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And if it's leading you a certain way in your eating, then don't override. Because I really believe that the Holy Spirit leads us even in our eating. Amen. And it's not for us to just eat anything and then we bless it. No, mm -hmm. that's not it. That's not the way of God. Amen. And thank you. Thank you for the word on today, and I thank you all for listening. So share this word if, if you find it beneficial uh, for yourself and you know that it can be a blessing to somebody else, then share this word with other people so that we can live. You know, Amen. Psalms 118 and 17 says, I shall live and not die and declare the wondrous works of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, so we want to live. We want to live and we want to do our part. You know, God numbers our days and God knows our days, but you know, there's something that we can do ourselves to help ourselves to live longer. Right. So let's do that. God bless you, First Amen. Lady. God Thank bless you, you for joining. Uh, all of you listening out there, I want you to know that we love you. God loves you best. And there's nothing that you can do about it. God bless you. We'll see you all next Tuesday. If the Lord bless and says the same. Amen.